can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal with lies. Hey everyone. Um, so, now I'm back again. Sorry, I haven't been uploading lately. Um, but I have a new concept I'd like to explore. Now, it's kind of connected to the last video I did, anti-social media, in which I asked if um, maybe our interactions weren't being affected in certain ways, and that uh, maybe we've come to a point in which our new technologies have sort of outpaced our own natural ability to keep up with what they mean. Well, I've been thinking more about this, and it's been interesting as I've poured over the ideas. I have noticed that perhaps by virtue of the rise of social media, and bearing in mind that my generation, roundabouts my age, 30s right now, may be one of the last who will grow up remembering a time before instant communication, a time before Facebook and Twitter, or even MySpace, and a time before smartphones, or even cell phones. Mankind has always seemed to desire this instantaneous and constant communication. Always wanting to be able to be up to speed on everything that's going on. Always wanting to be um, in touch with everyone at all times. And now we've entered an era in which uh, you no longer wonder what a person is doing, typically. You can just look it up online. And I think it's really actually affected and impacted not just the ways in which we communicate with each other, but I think perhaps, to a certain extent, the sorts of value that we place on our interactions and our relations with one another. And think about this, when's the last time that you, in earnest, in the real life meat world, saw someone, spoke with them, and genuinely had the opportunity to say, it's been too long, we need to keep in touch. It doesn't happen quite as often because people that people want to associate with are almost always in immediate contact. Someone moves across the country it's not as grave a loss to us anymore because it's not as though we're not going to be able to talk to them. In the past, it might have been something as you know, far-fetched as letter writing or even up through conversations on the phone from time to time to catch up. However, now, daily instant contact and communication via Skype and messengers are just the absolute norm. And as such, it, it kind of has caused me to really wonder if the sorts of investments which good friends close confidants of any sort, conventionally sort of build between them, the bonds which form between those with close relations. If those bonds aren't somehow fundamentally weakened by the existence of this constant contact, it's cheap. Communication itself is now cheap. People say anything they think at any given time, sometimes with various consequences they didn't foresee. But. You can say anything at any time to anyone, anywhere, for any reason, or no reason at all. As opposed to actually having to dwell with the thoughts that you have, and perhaps find a way to communicate them if they're that important. I worry that as we continue progressing as a society in which these things are the norm, in which the bonds people make can oftentimes be broken by the slightest of passive-aggressive miscommunications, via what is effectively an overblown and overused message board. If our relations and our communications won't be suffering further as a result, and what those effects on society as a large part might actually be. We oftentimes chide millennials for seeming like a, or an insipid, banal generation, um, preoccupied with fancies and flights of fancy that um, often mean next to nothing while at the same time demanding that their uniqueness be celebrated. Social media, I believe, is possibly one of the root causes of this new growth that we've seen. Outrage culture as well. Now, outrage culture itself seems so oftentimes predicated on miscommunication and misunderstanding and spreads like wildfire through the means of social media simply because it's that easy to get angry and express it righteously to the world. We may be entering an era in which when the generations currently growing up with this as their world, as their means of communication, as the tools through which they socialize, 
we could find down the line that these very people with these very methods of communicating may very well fuck up a great deal of important things down the line simply because they were unable to effectively communicate. It does seem odd, doesn't it? The notion of communication contact on tap all the time, 24-7, anywhere you are, that the abundance of our abilities to communicate with one another might actually end up being a great hindrance to our overall abilities as individual human beings as we grow up to socialize in healthy ways that aren't reliant on clicks and messengers, that aren't reliant on the passive aggression of uh, memes or public statements or vague posts and the like, where we actually have the opportunities to be away from people and miss them, to understand what their value really means when they're gone, or likewise to enjoy the true bliss of reconciliation, reunion, after a long and prolonged period in which this close confidant of yours was gone. I will be going forward, putting together something of a study if I can. This is my plan, at least. I haven't put it together yet, but I will be launching it here on the channel, and will be enlisting the help of friends going forward in the hopes of actually getting it to as many people as possible, it's just so that I can get as broad a sample as possible. And now this is going to be actually asking a series of questions, most likely. In my mind as I see it now, it'll basically be sort of a bit of a questionnaire. Uh, yes and no, or multiple choice questions, or ultimately just entries of your own. My hopes is that if I have enough responses to questions such as how perhaps social media has impacted your life, maybe even your real life, meat world life, or if you've noticed any sort of changes or effects in the way that you actually communicate with people that you meet out in the world, no, I want to I wanna try and examine this, collect as much data on it as I can, and then filter it through some very, very smart people who I'm very good friends with, and see what sorts of conclusions we can draw. Because we are breaking new ground here, all of us, together, even you watching me now. A decade or two ago, a man like me would have little to no chance to actually speak on public record to the point where thousands of people would have the chance and take the opportunity to actually listen. So as we break this new ground, I think that it's important, rather than just rushing headlong forward into it as we have been, to maybe from time to time pause, step back, and objectively try and consider what it is that we're all doing, and what the meaning of it ultimately means for our common humanity in this sense. So cheers, and thanks for sticking around. I hope to, well, come at you with this study thing rather soon. But more than that, I'm going to be looking forward to producing more and more content, and I mean regular, more content, more regularly, than I have been. I actually have a plan for possibly upwards of two to three videos a week coming up. This is all part of sort of a reboot going on. Now, I described this briefly in my uh, update video prior to making this one, but for this particular purpose and in this particular instance, I think it's worth pointing out that I will be going in some new directions with this channel. Now, there will still be much of the same old content that you've come to enjoy, probably at about the same regularity, but I'm hoping to actually add in more. Examining things outside of just the political perspective, and taking a chance to actually examine more of what the human condition actually is in our modern era and in our modern time. Because we can talk about political division all we like, but until we understand perhaps what the motivating factors to a human's individual choice to go down a particular road actually are, and how the environment that we're existing within affects that, well, I think those arguments are just going to continue going in circles. So I look forward to seeing you here again, and I hope you enjoy the new content to come as well as your old favorite kind of stuff. That being the case, thank you for bearing with me and coming back. And I suppose I'll just see you next time. You can, you can go now. And any time. Okay. Keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your matter.
disaster. If you can think and not make thoughts rain, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop, and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of itch and talks, and lose and start again in your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on.